You want to transcribe something? Transcribe this. The notebook is the most convincing love story of our time. That's right, I said it. It's impeachment time and we start here with five impeachment headlines from the week that was in under 30 seconds. Number one, the first elections of the impeachment era brought big wins for Democrats, most notably in Kentucky and Virginia. Number two, former Ukraine ambassador Marie Yovanovitch testified Rudy Giuliani undercut US policy in the region. Number three, Bill Taylor told Trump impeachment investigators that he, quote, sent something odd in the Zelensky call thinking Trump was linking it to a quid pro quo. Number four, Gordon Sondland updated his impeachment testimony describing a quid pro quo. And number five, public impeachment hearings will begin next week. Okay, so let's talk more deeply about transcripts. A number of them have already been released from the closed door testimony in the House impeachment inquiry. And as these proceedings move into open door testimony, new questions are still coming up about these transcripts. To break down all of your transcript related questions and mine, I'm joined by CNN national security reporter, Kylie Atwood. Kylie has been giving network readouts of the transcripts as they have been released. She's been on TV nonstop. And in her career, she's covered the State Department extensively, specifically focusing on Secretaries Mike Pompeo and Rex Tillerson. When not traveling the globe to report on foreign relations, it's very cool sounding, she devotes her time to photography, running, and skiing. Same, Kylie, same. Okay, Kylie, so let's start basic. Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, has released a handful of transcripts from these closed door interviews that he's done. Why is he doing that? Does he have to do it? And will he continue to do it? So what they did is they had closed door hearings first. And the reason that they did that, and they've gotten a lot of scrutiny from the, de from the, the Republicans century, yes. for doing that because they said it was a secretive process and, you know, it was politically driven. But the reality is that they had to do that to start because if they were going to be discussing anything that was uh, information that shouldn't be leaked out to the public, that it was classified in any way, they didn't want to do that in a public setting. So they started behind closed doors. Now it's in the interest of Chairman Schiff and all of the Democrats to pull this out before the public. And that's what we're starting to mm -hmm. see right now. We're starting to see these full transcripts. And then starting next week, we'll see the open testimony. I want to run through a, a Republican talking point or two, and I want you to tell me if they're fair or unfair. But the, the one you hear the most is Democrats are making the rules, mm -hmm. which you point out, at least in this, they are in terms of release they schedule. They are. They're majority. Yep. They're making the rules. We don't get a say or get to ask questions. Can That's you address? False. Okay, so explain the the falsehood and why the transcripts tell us it's false about they don't get to ask questions. There is exactly equal time given to the Democrats and the Republicans during these closed door testimonies. And we have seen that as we've gone through these transcripts. So a lot of times uh, the Democrats are asking questions that are specific to this impeachment inquiry. We have seen a different line of questioning from the Republicans. But we've trying... seen a line of questioning, just we to have. drive that point yes, home. The yes. idea that, de that when, <laughs> when a Republican member of Congress gets yeah. a question, I'm just like, oh, shh, shh, shh. no, right. not, like, we, they ask questions, keep going. They Sorry. ask their questions right. and they haven't given up any of their time as far as we, right. as we have seen. So there have been some uh, Republicans who've decided not to show up. Mm -hmm. That's Which is their, their right. own <laughs> decision. That's right. not because the Democrats said you can't come in. So the reality is that even though they're asking different types of questions, they're both at the table and they're both uh, equally represented. Okay, so you are tasked with going through these things. Yeah. You're going to have glasses like me soon. <laughs> Just too much, re <laughs> too much reading on a computer. I already have contacts. Oh, okay, okay. So how much is it worth reading the whole transcript for uh, like how much is contained in here we the reporters covering this have to read every page and we do uh. but then what we're doing is cutting down and filling out this story because it started with the whistleblower complaint mm -hmm. right and then what we saw is kind of the bare bones being filled in by each individual person's testimony. And what they have all come to acknowledge at this point is that there was some deal being concocted by Trump administration officials to get the Ukrainians to make some public statement right. about 2016 and the Bidens, and then they would get their security assistance. That is the general idea that every person coming forth is confirming. And that's the important thing here is driving home 
home um, if there was a quid pro quo and if there was anything illegal that the Trump administration did. And how does, if at all, the closed door transcripts, does that influence, should we expect to see a verbatim recounting from what they said in the closed door to what they say in the open door? Will there be a difference and do we know? And if so, why? Yeah, I mean, the, the major difference between the transcripts that we've seen and what we're going to see in these open hearings is that one, we don't have any video of, and when we see the hearings, there will be video of it. So there will be video of this content coming from these career diplomats mm -hmm. explaining what they knew. And that is key for the Hugely American powerful. people yeah. to understand. Because if you or I are watching TV and we see quotes up on the television, you kind of have to get close and you have to read it and you have to be really and listening. And it's like a block quote. I mean, it's long. Right, right. right. Yeah. Um, no so, offense, American public, but we, you know, we don't have great attention span. Last Thing. Like you said, thousands of pages of transcript. Thousands. <laughs> right. What should people pay attention to in these transcripts and then in the coming open hearing? I think one thing that we'll be uh, really focused on is the credibility of these witnesses, what they are saying, and if people really trust what they're saying. So that's one thing. But then content-wise, in terms of what actually went down, who knew about it, there is one conversation that is really pivotal, and that's when Ambassador Gordon Sondland told a Ukrainian official that it was likely that they wouldn't be getting the U.S. security assistance unless they publicly announced investigations into 2016 and the Bidens. That's a key moment to look at. Now, Sondland says that he doesn't exactly remember who told him that, but we have heard from him and many other of these witnesses that that was their understanding. Right. That was the deal that was being... And the Ukrainians didn't know that Sondland didn't remember who had told him, right? I mean, no. he's a representative of the United right. States. So, right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We make new point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and a special impeachment episode every weekend. Check them all out.